Hello and welcome to a simple video. Um, we're going to be teaching basic electronics. So if we're going to be teaching basic electronics, you need to know about electricity. So we're going to be talking about electricity in this video, um, as well as looking at using a multimeter to check for different things. Um, so I'm going to go straight ahead and let's start off with current. Um, current, as we know it today, was uh, suggested by Benjamin Franklin. Um, and moving from the positive to the negative terminal on a battery or a power source. So I have a battery here. Um, in fact, let's get one that's not inside a holder because it's easier to see. Um, and we have two terminals on the battery. You can see this one here is marked with a plus. So this is the positive side. And this one is marked with a negative. So that's the negative side. And Benjamin Franklin suggested that um, power would flow from positive to negative. Um, that's actually not accurate. Um, what actually happens is electrons flow from the negative to the positive. So we have two different types of current. We have electron current, which I believe was uh, discovered when J.J. Thompson discovered the atom, and what we call conventional current, which is how Benjamin Franklin suggested everything would work. Uh, for all these videos, we're going to be going with conventional current, so from the positive to the negative. Um, in fact, if you look at a lot of circuit diagrams, things like LEDs and diodes, and transistors are pointed so that it goes from the positive to the negative. So that's the way we'll be looking at things. A battery then. So we have here a 9 volt battery. You can get other types of battery as well. You can get the little button batteries. So things like this one. Uh, so this is a single cell battery. You might hear it called cells. But the way that this works is inside there's a couple of bits of metal and carbon. Um, and some electrolytic fluid in there, or probably some electrolytic paste if it's a dry cell. Um, and what happens is the chemical that's in there, when you connect the two together, it creates a reaction um, that sends the electrons flowing from the negative side to the positive side. So they create like massive repulsion against each other, they just want to escape. So when you create a circuit and connect the positive to the negative, those electrons can then escape, go through the circuit, power the circuit on, create the voltage, and come back. Now, this is a 9 volt battery. The voltage, um, as discovered by Alessandro Volta, who's an Italian guy, so the voltage is kind of like the pressure of all the electrons that's trying to flow through. If you think of it like a bucket, um, so all the water that's pushing down to the bottom of the bucket, that's the voltage. Okay. Then you have current. So current is the flow of electrons from one side to the other. Um, and it's how many, I think, flow in a certain period of time. Um, that's how we measure current. And we measure them in amps, uh, after André-Marie Ampère. Voltage and amps. So that's, that's really basically all you need to know about electricity. There's two types of electricity as well. There's alternating current, uh, called AC. Uh, that was pioneered by Nikola Tesla. Um, so he was the, considered to be the inventor of alternating current. And at the same time, direct current, DC, which is what a battery is. Um, that was discovered by Thomas Edison. So direct current flows from one side to the other, whereas AC will actually vibrate. It will go from positive to negative, negative to positive. It will flip. If you ever see direct current on an oscilloscope, you'll see it as a flat line. Whereas if you see AC current, you'll see it as a, a wavy line. Uh, so that's the different types of current you would get. Uh, one other thing that we need to talk about as well is resistance. Um, this comes up quite a lot in circuits, um, and it will come up quite a lot in some of the simple circuits that we build as well. Um, so resistance is kind of how the voltage slash current would be limited through a circuit. So you do that with different types of uh, components, but most commonly you do it with a resistor. Um, and resistance is measured in ohms. We use the Greek symbol omega, um, and that's after a guy called George Simon Ohm. Um, so later on we'll be coming on to what we call Ohm's law, um, and I'll show you how you work out which resistor you would need to save an LED from burning out. Right, so this is a non-rechargeable battery, so once the chemical reaction in here has stopped, that's it. There'll be no more electrons flowing from side to side. You can kind of think of it as almost like the electrons are going to the positive side to make the positive side more negative. And then once it's balanced, that's it. That's the end. 
rechargeable batteries, you can reset the process by adding power into them. It's, it's the same kind of thing. You can think of it as like drawing all the negative electrons out of the positive side and then just letting it flow again. Um, so that's a simple, very simple way to, to do it. I know that's not exactly how it works. So if we take a picture of a bucket, um, we can see the pressure pushing down through the water is the voltage, remember? Um, the current is the flow that comes from the bucket, uh, the rate of the flow. The higher the current, the more water is going to be pouring out of that bucket. And finally, the resistance would be the size of that hole. So the bigger the hole, the more current can flow through. Um, and also, when you'll notice that when you let a lot more current through, the voltage will drop a lot quicker. And it's the same with a battery. If you connect things up that takes a lot of current or draws a lot of current, it will drain the battery quicker. Moving on then, we have a multimeter. Now, all those things I just spoke about, voltages, amps, and ohms, a multimeter can actually read. Um, it has a dial on the front here, so this is just a simple multimeter. Um, it's got set ranges. Some multimeters have auto ranges, so you'll see just this symbol, and then it'll automatically select which one for whatever you're measuring. Um, but this one you have to manually select. Some of them would also have, say, a transistor or a capacitor test um, on here. This one doesn't, like I said. It was only a few pound off of Amazon ages ago. Um, so, <laughs> very simple. Okay, and on here, um, if I just take a freeze frame of this, I'm going to highlight the different areas. Okay, so over here we have voltage for direct current. So that uh, solid line with the little dots means direct current, DC. And we can measure anything up to 500 volts on there. Uh, if we go down the scale of 220, 2000 millivolts and 200 millivolts. That's how much voltage direct current we can do. We're probably not going to be going above the 20 because I only have a 9 volt battery. And then again, I use a power supply that drops it down to 5. So below that, there's a V with a wavy line. Uh, that stands for alternating current. So voltage AC. So we have here 200 or 500 volts. If you're in the USA, you can stick this into a plug socket, although I don't really recommend it. Um, and you'll see that it measures 120 volts, roughly. Um, so you'd use a 200. Over here in the UK, our plug sockets are 240 volts or thereabouts. So we would be looking at 500 volts on there. Ah, next we have a diode test and continuity test. If you use the diode test, you should uh, have a look at the display and you should see something around about 660. Um, if it's a fully working diode or a one, which would show it's an open circuit, um, depending on which way you're testing the diode. Um, if you get a one where it's an open circuit and you're testing the diode in the right fashion, then it's a busted diode. A uh, continuity test just basically means it will check to see if power can flow from one to the side to the other. So it's handy for checking the broken cable or a broken wire or something like that. Um, the next one you see there is frequency. Don't worry about that. We're not going to be using that. So let's move on. Next around the dial is amps direct current. So this can't measure amps in an alternating current circuit. It can only measure amps in a direct current circuit. And you can see the smallest amount we can measure is 2000. It's got that little funky U. That means micro. So 2000 micro amps all the way up to 10 amps. And the final section on the dial is resistance. So that ohm symbol means resistance. Anything from 200 ohms all the way up to 200 M which is 200 million or 200 mega ohms. Okay, so coming back to live picture instead of just that still, you can see we've got three ports on the multimeter here. So the one on the right says COM, the one in the middle says V ohm MA squiggle, and the one on the left says 10A max. So what does that mean? Well, it comes with two probes. Let me grab the first one. The first one is a black probe looks like this and the other end looks like this so this is the end that we're going to attach to circuits this is the end we attach to our multimeter and that goes into the com so that's common ground and usually you don't move that one out of there at all so you can see around here it's got this insulated wire and it ends with a conductive probe at the front okay so for those of you who don't know an insulator is something that does not conduct electricity and conductor is something that does conduct electricity. So electricity can pass through here, but it can't pass through here. Handy, especially if we've got those high voltages, we don't want to be putting ourselves into danger. Uh, semiconductors, like silicon, they can conduct and not conduct. We'll come onto those later. That's a little bit more confusing than what we need to know right now. 
Okay, and the second test lead is a red one. So you can see here, a lovely red probe on that end. And on this end, we've got another plug. Where is it? There it is. <laughs> Come over here, plug. Uh, so which one do we put this into? Well, it depends on what we want to measure. The one on the left here, you see 10 amp max, that's really only used when we want to measure current and when we want to measure anything above 200 milliamps. So anything above 200 milliamps up to 10 amps is what we put here. But if we do measure 10 amps or anything above 200 milliamps, we can only do it for 10 seconds. Okay, it says there, unfused, max 10 seconds each 15 minutes. So for every 15 minutes we use it, we can only measure current for 10 seconds. So like I said, this is a cheap crap one and it will blow very easy. The one that we're going to be using is this one. Poof, in it goes. So voltages, so we can measure voltage normally. Uh, resistance, so that ohm symbol. MA, milliamps, we can measure current in milliamps. And signals, but we don't care about that. Uh, maximum 500 volts, you see there. Anyway, right, so that's our multimeter set up. Now what we're going to do is build some simple circuits and show you how we read things. I've got my little bits and pieces ready. Um, I have this little board here that I'm going to plug into my breadboard. And all that does is it drops down my 9 volt battery from 9 volts down to 5 volts. Okay, so I'm just going to plug that in and we're ready to go. Right, um, we're going to just build a simple circuit. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a uh, LED. So this is just a white LED here. Okay, and I'm going to plug that into my breadboard here. So that, and I'm going to take this, uh, which is a 100 ohm resistor, and I'm going to pop that into here, like so. And I'm going to take a jumper cable or jumper lead to jump it from there into the positive side. So this is a very, very simple circuit here. Uh, let me just try and push this in because it's a bit stuck. There we go. So we see here we've got an, the uh, negative side is coming into the LED. That's going into this resistor and that's going back to the positive. So that's classical uh, electron flow. Um, what happens when I turn it on? The LED lights up. Okay, so it's a very simple circuit. Now we're going to measure parts of this circuit. Okay, so I'm going to take my multimeter and switch it to 20 volts because we're using more than that 2000 millivolts but less than 20 volts. So we want something that's in between. Okay, and I'm going to take my test probes. I'm going to put the test probe onto the negative side here, like so. And I'm going to put this one over here on the positive side where it comes back to the battery. Now, we measure about 5 volts, so 4.96, 4.98. All right, so fair enough. So we know that five volts is flowing through here. Now, what happens if we take the negative uh, probe onto the leg of the LED and the positive probe onto the other leg of the LED? What do we get? Hmm, interesting. 3.15, 3.16 volts. Right. What about the resistor? Let's put it onto one side of the resistor and the other side of the resistor. What do we get? Hmm. 1.79. So what does that mean? Well, the circuit is producing 5 volts, but everything in the circuit has to use up that whole 5 volts. So if you cross over here with this, this LED is rated for anything between 3.1 and 3.4 volts. Uh, so this is actually using 3.16 volts, okay? Um, whereas this one is just using up whatever's left. <laughs> so the, the LED is really taking up everything that it needs to. Right, so that's very interesting. Everything in the circuit must add up to 5 volts. Um, this is what we call a series circuit. So everything goes in line from the negative to the positive. We can also have parallel circuits where things go um, next to each other. And um, we'll come on to series and parallel later. Um, but for now, just know that everything in the circuit will need to add up to the voltage that is pumping through it. Okay, so what about current. For this one, we need to actually change the circuit a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this test lead out and leave it dangling. Okay, so it's not going to be a complete circuit. And I'm going to move down here to, let's go, 20 milliamps, shall we? Now I'm going to connect my test probe straight to here. 
and I'm going to put my other test probe against here. Now what's going to happen is the circuit is going to complete through the multimeter and then the multimeter is going to tell us how many milliamps are running through the circuit. So let's do that now. So we see that we've got a reading of about 16.8 milliamps. Okay, if I take the, one of the probes off, you see the circuit disconnects because we have to run it through the multimedia to measure the amps. So 16.85 milliamps is pretty good. The LED itself is rated for a maximum of 20 milliamps. If I was to connect it straight to the leg of the LED, um, would actually be by bypassing this and pumping the full 5 volts through this LED. Now when this LED takes more than its required voltage, it will burn out. Um, and that will happen with any LED, as I can show you in this little video clip. Did you see that? You can probably see a little bit more close up. Now, that, <laughs> that uh, LED... Um, Oh, it smells of burning in here now. <laughs> okay, so you can see it's important for us to limit the voltage and the current that goes through the LED um, so that we can have a nice, bright LED. Okay, but then how do we know which resistor we're supposed to use to protect that LED? Well, we're going to come on to that with Ohm's Law. But first, let's just take a look at this resistor. And I'm going to switch this over to resistance on my multimeter. So I'll stick it to 200 because I know the resistance of this is much less. And I'm going to stick the probe to one side here and the probe to the other side here and we should have a reading of around about 100 ohms because this is a 100 ohm resistor. Okay you see we get 99.5 or 99.6. Now that's not entirely accurate, it's not 100 ohms exactly um, and the reason why is because of these bands on the top. Now this is a metal film resistor, okay? These are slightly more expensive ones than uh, the common brown ones that you'd get. Let me just grab one of them for you. Okay, so this one is a carbon film resistor. Notice the brown coloring, okay? Um, and this one is a, I think a 1000 ohm resistor. So let's move this over to the 2000 setting and just double check that. So there we go, 982, you see that? This is a 1000 ohm resistor, or what we would call a 1K ohm resistor, but it's reading less than it should be. Now the reason for that is because of the tolerance of these. Let me just grab my little chart. Okay, so in order to figure out the resistance of a resistor, if you don't have a multimeter to hand and you just want to have a look at these little stripes on there, um, they are actually color coded. You read them from left to right. Uh, the biggest gap between the left and the right is here, you see. So this gap here is the biggest gap, so that goes on the right. And you can see this one is brown, black, red, and that tells us that it's 1000 ohms. And I have this handy chart here. Okay, let me just freeze frame that for you. Awesome, so now that's freeze framed. Um, so we can see here black, brown, red. Now this only has, uh, the resistor only has four bands on it, so it has three bands for the value and a gold band to tell you the tolerance. So we can see brown here is a one. So the first significant figure is a one. Second significant figure is black. So that's a zero. Now the third one, you don't use the significant figure. It's a multiplier. The significant figures are only used for a five and a six band um, resistor, which you probably get with uh, the metal films. But for most of the carbon films, you only use the two figures and then a multiplier. So you've got brown, black, and then red is times 100. So if we have a look at that all together, brown 1, black 0, and the red is times 100. So 10 times 100 is 1000. Now the gold band signifies the tolerance. So the tolerance for that is 5%, which means it can be 50 ohms above or 50 ohms below. Uh, so you remember we got, what was it, 980 something? So that's well within the tolerance levels. Um, so just have to remember that it might not be exact that you get it. And if you're working on some kind of voltage divider, uh, you will have to get exact values. So you'll have to go through and find ones that are a pair and you'll need a multimeter and oh, it's a nightmare. Okay, so that's a basic introduction to electricity and a multimeter. So very, very simple. Uh, let me just make this circuit back up again. Here we go. Look at that. Going to get our lovely little LED glowing for the outro. Boof. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful.
Anyway, so that's a very simple introduction to uh, electricity. Um, we're going to be doing a lot more videos on electronics uh, coming up. So I'll be doing a lot more information about uh, resistors, transistors, diodes, you name it. We're going to go over almost every single electronic component that we're going to be using in our little makes. Uh, so yeah, feel free to hit me up with a comment. Let me know what you'd like to see or if there's anything wrong, please let me know um, the correction so I can correct myself. And yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, please subscribe and like. Subscribing helps us out quite a bit. If you really want to be fancy, you can go check out our Patreon as well. Uh, that would always help us keep us in components. And until the next time, until the next video, catch you later. Bye bye. Look at my LED. Look at my LED. My LED is glowing.